Let's denote the given integral by i. Now let's substitute 2x minus pi equal to y. Taking the derivative of both sides, we get 2 dx is equal to dy or dx is equal to half of dy. Now when x is equal to 0, which is the lower limit of integration, y is equal to minus pi. And when x is equal to pi, which is the upper limit of integration, y is equal to plus pi. Also, since y is equal to 2x minus pi, x is equal to y plus pi upon 2, which is equal to pi upon 2 plus y upon 2. Therefore, i is equal to integral y going from minus pi to pi, replacing all x with y plus pi upon 2, we get pi plus y upon 2 times sine of 2x, which is equal to sine of pi plus y, times sine of pi upon 2 cos x, which is equal to sine of pi upon 2 times cos of pi upon 2 plus y upon 2, divided by 2x minus pi, which is equal to y, and finally dx, which can be replaced with dy upon 2. Now sine of pi plus y is equal to minus sine y, and cos of pi upon 2 plus y upon 2 is equal to minus of sine of y upon 2. Therefore, the integral i simplifies to 1 upon 4 times integral minus pi to pi, pi plus y times minus sine y times sine of minus pi upon 2 times sine y upon 2 upon y dy. Now, this can be simplified and further resolved into two components. The first component is 1 upon 4 times integral minus pi to pi, pi sine y times sine of pi upon 2, sine y upon 2, upon y dy. And the second component is equal to 1 upon 4 times integral minus pi to pi, y sine y, times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2, upon y dy. The y cancels in the integrand of the second integral. Now let's assume that the integrand of the first integral, which is equal to pi sine y upon y, times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2, be denoted by fy. Therefore, f of minus y, is equal to pi times sine of minus y upon minus y times sine of pi upon 2 sine minus y upon 2. Sine of a negative of an angle is equal to minus of sine of that angle and therefore f of minus y simplifies to minus pi sine y upon y times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2. And notice that this is equal to minus of fy. In other words, f of y, or the integrand of the first integral, is an odd function. And therefore, using properties of definite integrals, integral minus pi to pi fy dy is equal to 0. And therefore, we are left with only the second term in the expression for i, which is equal to 1 upon 4 times integral minus pi to pi, sine y times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2, dy. Now let's refer to the integrand of this integral by gy. Note that g of minus y is equal to sine of minus y times sine of pi upon 2, sine of minus y upon 2. Again, sine of negative of an angle is equal to minus of sine of that angle. Therefore, all the negative signs cancel and g of minus y turns out to be equal to gy. In other words, g of y is an even function 
and therefore using properties of definite integrals, integral minus pi to pi gy dy is equal to 2 times integral 0 to pi gy dy. And therefore, the given integral i is equal to 2 upon 4 times integral 0 to pi sine y times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2 dy. Now, sine of y is equal to 2 times sine of y upon 2 times cos of y upon 2. And therefore, i is equal to half of integral 0 to pi 2 sine y upon 2 cos y upon 2 times sine of pi upon 2 sine y upon 2 dy. Now let sine y upon 2 be equal to t. Taking the derivative of both sides, we get half of cos of y upon 2 dy is equal to dt. Or cos of y upon 2 dy is equal to 2 times dt. Now when y is equal to 0, which is the lower limit of integration, t is equal to sine 0, which is equal to 0. And when y is equal to pi, which is the upper limit of integration, t is equal to sine of pi upon 2, which is equal to 1. Therefore, i is equal to integral t going from 0 to 1. Sine y upon 2 is replaced with t. This times sine of pi upon 2 times t. And finally, cos of y upon 2 dy is replaced with 2 dt. Now integrating by parts, this is equal to 2 times in brackets t times the integral of sine pi t upon 2 which is minus of cos of pi t upon 2 times 2 upon pi with the limits of t being 0 and 1 minus integral 0 to 1 the integral of sine of pi t upon 2 which is minus of cos of pi t upon 2 times 2 upon pi times the derivative of t which is equal to 1 dt. Putting in the limits, we get 2 times in brackets minus cos pi upon 2 times 2 upon pi plus 2 upon pi times integral 0 to 1 cos pi t upon 2. The cos of pi upon 2 is equal to 0, therefore the first term vanishes. And therefore the value of i is equal to 4 upon pi times integral 0 to 1 cos of pi t upon 2 dt. This is equal to 4 upon pi times 2 upon pi times sine of pi t upon 2, the limits of t being 0 and 1. This is equal to 8 upon pi square times in brackets sine pi upon 2 minus sine 0, which is equal to 8 upon pi square, which is the value of the given definite integral.